Oh, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. It's great to be here. Thank you, uh, Claudia. Can we have a round of applause for Claudia and her team? Very few people have accomplished what Claudia's accomplished in the amount of time she has, and it's extraordinary. Thank you for all you're doing. So again, I'm Jorge Placencia, uh, CEO, co-founder of Republica Havas, uh, based in Miami. My career before um, marketing and advertising and everything we do today with amazing brands, uh, I was in the music business for a while. I was in sports. I was in media. Um, but I had a really, um, I was blessed in my career um, to be at different places in key times, right? I, I was with the Florida Marlins when we won our first World Series back in 97 um, in marketing and and then um, I, was, I worked for the Estefans, for Gloria Estefan and Emilio Estefan, um, doing an incredible time. It was the time where Gloria was coming off, you know, touring all the time, and uh, Emilio and Gloria were starting to focus on producing and managing other talent. Um, if you remember back to those days, you know, they were working with some of, some of the world's top talent um, and some of the top Latin talent. So I had a front row seat at um, what started to happen. A lot of the early meetings with, at the time, Michael Green, who was the president of the, of the Recording Academy, you know, to create the Latin Grammy Awards uh, and the Latin uh, Academy. Um, you know, the Estefans really helped with all that. So I was, you know, from Shakira's early days, all that was amazing, right? Um, I can't believe it was 20 years ago. But a pinnacle moment in 1999, in February of 99, was right here in New York City um, at, the, at Radio City Music Hall when um, the incredible Ricky Martin performed La, The Cup of Life, La Copa de la Vida. Who remembers that night? Who remembers that night? Everybody, right? So that was really the turning point. The turning point, because obviously, Yes, you had had Gloria and the incredible success, crossover success Gloria had had, and Julio Iglesias and Jose Feliciano and Santana and Selena uh, before she passed. And I mean, you name it, right? Um, but this was the moment where I think a lot of us, of my generation and younger, right, were saying, wow, you know, this is our culture and it's on the big stage, right? And, um, you know, somebody that was, that was key. Um, at that moment, he was truly the pillar behind a lot of what happened at that moment. And it was somebody that had had incredible success in English. You know, he had had some of the top um, uh, hits of all time, like Living on a Prayer, and How Can We Be Lovers, and You Give Love a Bad Name, and uh, I, I Was Made uh, for Loving You. And dude looks like a lady, and I could keep going and going and going. I could keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> is, um, is my friend Desmond Child. Yeah. And Desmond at that time, <laughs> Desmond at that time, he, he actually decided to move to Miami, and he'll tell you the story, move to Miami to connect back with his roots, because he'd been doing English for such a long time, but as a proud Cuban American, he wanted to connect back to his roots. So Desmond... And Erica, we're going to get to, to you. Sure. Uh, but Desmond, if we could start with you, take us back to that moment in time. Take us back to 98, 99. Take us back to that moment when Ricky performed on the Grammy Awards. Um, what was that like for you? Wow. It, I had left uh, home in Miami where I grew up, Miami Beach, uh, to go to school in New York. And that's where I started you know, here where I started my career while I was going to NYU uh, with my group. And then, you know, I started hanging out with people like Paul Stanley of KISS and Bon Jovi, Aerosmith. And I just kept going, kept going, kept going and having a lot of success in the American, you know, English speaking American market. And uh, then I moved to L.A., um, and um, I was living there with my now husband, Curtis. This was like 30-something years ago. And uh, we, had, we went through that earthquake, the Northridge earthquake. And I said, you know, mommy. And so I like, ran, back to, uh, <laughs> ran back to Miami Beach. And um, just uh, I said, I am not going to live in California. Not after what we went through. We were like scared to death. So, but that earthquake was the earthquake to me that ignited the Latin music explosion 
because I got to Miami and I started going to salsa lessons and, and uh, to all these clubs. And I got, my mother was a songwriter, Elena Casals, who wrote, you know, boleros and all that. So I grew up in Latin music, but I got back in touch with my Latin roots. So at, at, and so at the same time, there was a, a kid that I kept hearing about. He was on General Hospital. He was on, on Broadway in Le Mis. And uh, everyone said, you know, you really should work with this kid, Ricky Martin. And so I saw a video of him, uh, like, paralyzing Buenos Aires, like an aerial shot, a million people out to see him perform live on the street. And so I said, okay, I get it. So I had this idea to bring what I had learned in a stadium arena rock music with Aerosmith, Bon Jovi, and Kiss and bring it to Latin music. So I wanted to create Latin music that was anthemic. So that's where you got, you know, the cup here of life. we go. Ale, ale, ale. <laughs> go, go, oh, no. go. Ale, ale, ale. <laughs> and then we, we grew out of that into living la vida loca. So we know that one, right? See, I learned from Reverend Jackson. <laughs> we, we do it like this. Upside, inside, out. <laughs> she pushed and pulled me out. <laughs> you see? Thank you so much. That's the way it's done. So it really, uh, I wanted to also change the sound of the music because prior to when I got there, Latin music had become kind of a, a stepbrother, sister to American music. It was very pop. It was like pop, American pop with Spanish l lyrics. To me, that wasn't Latin music. So I started to, um, you know, kind of reinvent how Latin music was going to be presented. So I, I created the first um, Pro Tool studio. So everything was done digitally. And I started approaching it like they did dance music and hip hop. And so that's why the sound of that changed the sound of Latin music. And, um, and nothing was ever the same after that. So it opened the door to a lot of rhythmic music that was coming out of you know, uh, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Santo Domingo, you know, Mexico, Argentina. It was a whole urban sound that came in with Living La Vida Loca. And so that was the birth of reggaeton, and I bring you Erica Ender. So I, I want to say that um, you know Desmond's uh, new album just came out. Go make sure you go get it, Desmond Child Live. It's it's amazing. Um, make sure you get it. And I know, paid him extra. And, to and say I that. and I and I commend you uh, for uh, he co-founded with uh, with our friend Rudy Perez the Latin Songwriters Hall of Fame and the La Musa Awards, which is, if you've never been to this show, it's extraordinary. It's in October down in Miami, but um, it celebrates our music in such an authentic way because it celebrates, you know, the people that truly make our music, right? The unsung and, heroes. The unsung heroes. Uh, but speaking of someone that truly makes music, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be up here with two people that I, that I highly um, respect and admire. And, um, you know, what could I say about Erica Ender? Um, you know, again, having been um, myself worked for extraordinary people like Emilio and Gloria and music and what they've done, knowing this guy, and then having Erica also as a, as a dear friend. Erica, what you did recently in the last few years, um, you know, you, you, you with Fonsi and Yankee, you guys created a song um, that truly became a global phenomenon, a global anthem. But what's interesting about it, when Justin Bieber comes in, it was you know, a, you know, a crossover the other way, right? Because it's a song that became huge in Español, and then someone like Justin Bieber raised his hand and said, you know what, I want to record it in English. And you know what happened to the song, both in Spanish and in English, and that's uh, Despacito. So, yeah. <laughs> But what's important about Erica is that she was a legend in her own right way before Despacito. You know, she's had so many number one hits. Um, and, you know, we, Desmond and I have both been to Panama, where she's beloved. That's her home country. So, Erica, let's talk about you briefly, because I know we're really tight on time. But, um, eh, but <laughs> yeah, okay, good. So, um, <laughs> let's talk about you, because... Um, you know, you moved to Miami about 20 years ago because 23 years, 23 years ago when you, oh, it's, you okay. 23 now it's years working, ago huh? when you were a little girl 
And, Almost. And, um, <laughs> no, I'm and, 45. And, proudly 45. We're both 45. <laughs> we're both 45. <laughs> proudly 45. Yeah, I came to the U.S. Well, when I was t- 22. You were telling me that you would, you know, you would admire what Gloria and Emilio... Yeah, and now what, that you're mentioning all of that, since I was a little girl, I used to admire a lot of artists. But when I saw Gloria Estefan and Emilio Estefan taking over the world with Conga, I was like nine years old. And I remember sitting watching TV beside my mom and saying, you know what? I want the world to sing my songs as well. You know, so she inspired me. And after that, I saw Ricky as well. And that was an inspiration because it was, we got, we related to that moment. We, we felt like we were represented, you know? And I think that was a, a very important moment for the Spanglish, you know? Mm-hmm. That's when I think the Spanglish started in music. So I admire you very much to my so friend. Let's fast forward and to today. And then today, what happened is that, uh, well, my dream was always to write a song that the whole world could sing, but I thought it would be made in English. So I was pursuing that crossover, and I moved to L.A. in order to do that, but always sticking to my roots, which is what I think is valuable in all of us, you know, the way we see the world. And I love the way that um, Claudia is doing her work and that this foundation is called we are, We're All Human because at the end, we're all the same. In essence, we're all the same. We just see the world with different eyes. The same body that you know, dances a, different, ryth- to a different rhythm and then the same tongue that speaks a different language. So um, when I went to L.A., uh, ironically, Fonsi calls me and tells me, you know what, I'm looking for songs for n- my next CD. And we used to write before. We had singles before. And he tells me, uh, can you come over to Miami so we can write something? And then I went back to Miami. I sat with him. It was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. At 6, the song was made. And between 2 and 3, we were having coffee and chatting, you know? So I think that whenever a song comes with a mission, and I, I really think that they come with a mission, and yours came with it as well. Um, it just flows. It came out of a guitar, no uh, beats, no producers, nothing. We just sat down and wrote a song. He wanted to challenge himself because he was very well known as a, a Latino balladist, and he wanted to do something different, and everything that was trending was reggaeton. I grew up listening to reggaeton in Panama, you know? And um, the thing is that we just sat down, it was supernatural, and we weren't expecting this to be the crossover. It became. It just started like a snowball on day one, number one in 14 countries. Then 24 hours later, the most uh, seen video on YouTube ever, and then more than 6 billion streams. It was crazy, and we j- it just kept surprising us. But then I understood it had a mission. It had the mission of breaking the walls they wanted to build for Latinos. It had the mission of crossing over in our own language, which was what I think was the best gift that uh, the world could give us and Justin could give us because he decided to record the song mostly in Spanish. And it made me, and I say this in a very humble way, a woman in the middle of all of this that broke all records in music music history because of that song as well. So I hope, (laughs) I really hope that I can, I really hope that I can inspire that new girl you know, just the same way that Gloria Estefan inspired myself and that we can all understand that by using music as a powerful tool, we can really make a difference. The, the three of us, we talk often about many different things and we talk a lot about the image of Latinos in America, right? And I know that's a big part of why we're here to, you know, to exalt and um, celebrate the contributions of this community, of all of this community to this country. You know, you're both people that have given back in such a way. Um, it, Erica created something in Panama that I have no doubt can be replicated here in the U.S. and different countries around the world for children and throughout education and the arts. Uh, can you just tell us about that, Erica? Because, you know, we have this forum at the United Nations with leaders from all over, and it would be wonderful for them to know what Talempro is and does, and it was your brainchild, and it is truly changing and shifting the paradigm in Panama. I totally give credit to my mom and dad because they, um, I grew up listening to my mom saying all the time, we all have a talent, we have different talents, different skills, 
and we have to use it for the common good. So use your talent with a purpose. That's why it's called talempro. Who, how many Latinos in, house, in the house? So you understand Spanish, right? Talento con propósito. Talent with a purpose. So it's a platform that showcases talent in different categories, but at the same time gives you um, tools for life. Now we're in a world that is so broken. There are so many families that are broken nowadays. Technology is helping us very much, but technology without integrity and values has no value. So the thing is that I tried to uh, create a met uh, methodology that would sum talent, values, social responsibility, and education. And the kids submit their material in each category, and then after they're picked as finalists for, their, um, for the grand finale, they have to recruit people in their own school. And then out of that, they receive different uh, workshops with tools for life, values, and everything else. So that was the, the, the back door that I found to you know, uh, plant that seed in the new generation. And then they get, they get prepared to do social labor towards a school in a vulnerable condition. So through uh, this program, we get to restore 12 schools a year. And the kids, the, the youth is doing it themselves. And those know? kids get scholarships. And Can then we speak whenever, to that? yeah, whenever they get to the grand finale, they get scholarships. They can study whatever they want. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere so in the world. So it's all together. And I think that, as I was saying, it's such a powerful tool. We have a microphone here, cameras, everything. If we use it the right way, we can really make a difference in the world. We just have to unite and understand that. So we were, we were down in Panama recently, and, and we both got to see what Erika does down there. And guys, this airs live on the three television networks, prime time, from 7 to 10? 10. 10 yeah. From 7 o'clock to 10. Just, just like, you know, it, it would stand up for cancer here in the U.S.? Same thing in Panama, and it's all created by Erica. So another big round. You know. Thank you. God has been very good to, to her, and she continues to give back. Yeah. Desmond, I, I, I want to end with a question or two from the audience, but I want to ask you, why do you think that 20 years later, we're still having to have these conversations? Why do you think that we're still not there yet in regard to, to the image of this community? Because today, the world and the U.S. and America is eating our food. They love our, they love our, our culture. They love our, the taste. They love our music. Look at Maluma and J Balvin and Becky G and Carol G and Bad Bunny. And the list goes on and on. And Mark Anthony and, and you guys, you name it, and yeah. J-Lo. Yet, we're still fighting for, for, um, for the image of, of the community and the representation of the community. What can you say to that? Well... <clears throat> Just like in the African-American community, the, the athletes and the, the singers, the, the artists, they're, they're up front. And so that's the same with us. But it doesn't mean that prejudice and racism is over just because you like, you know, Beyonce. You know, it's so uh, systemic to our world, you know, and um, it, it has to be done from... From the beginning, you 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 don't you don't uh, you're not born with hate. You learn hate, and so you know th this has been like the most divisive time I've ever seen America since the civil rights era. And I marched with uh, Coretta Scott King in Atlanta when I was 14 years old. I went came up from Miami, and um, you know I'm heartbroken every day with the things that I see. With, and so I, I don't have any answers. The, the music and, uh, is the one thing that no matter what, both sides of the equation love music. So maybe through music and, we, and the arts, we can find some kind of common ground. But we have to want to walk towards the middle, not run towards the sides. And we need That's leaders exactly right. that promote that. We need point. to get back to that. It's a great point. One question? Okay, a, a question from the audience or two. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. It's on. Okay, it's good. It's good. You can talk. Uh, when Dr. King was killed, some rioted, some retreated. Gentiles started marching for King's birthday. Mm -hmm. 
20 years that he marched alone. He's just like one man doing the impossible. Steve wanted to put the song Happy Birthday King to music. It became a national phenomenon. Sure. When Dr. King was against the Vietnam War, he was criticized and ostracized. Marvin Gaye did what's going on. <laughs> music has power when it has meaning to exactly transform right. Marvin Gaye and, and Steve Wonder but transform it. So music has that power if it's a proper property applied. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. Thank you so much. Thank you. One quite my friend Jorge Ortega back here. Thank you, Jorge, Desmond, and Erica. Thank Fellow you very Miami, much. By the way. Thank you. <laughs> Tokayo. Um, I have a question. What do you guys think about an idea of recording a song to launch our star campaign in March? <laughs> A little challenge. Let's do it Sorry. right now. Sorry, Let's Claudia. write it right now. Sorry, Claudia. I just, It'll be done by I four. I texted you the question, but I thought I would just ask this illustrious panel. No, it's, listen, it's a great point. Uh, Claudia, we've talked a little bit well, about I, that. No, I, yeah. and I think that that's a great follow-up. Listen, w this is important. We're the United Nations. The time is now. We've never been readier, thanks to people like uh, Don Juan Andrade and all the leaders that have brought us to be we're here. And we're ready to unify. We have this incredible platform, and we admire you both. You're Hispanic stars. Let's give them to the Hispanic yeah. stars. Yeah. So we launched, we launched yesterday this symbol that is a Hispanic star that can unify us all. It's like the rainbow for the LGBTQ. It's just a symbol so that there is no Mexican, Cuban, Puerto Rican, rich, poor, demo, like Democrat or Republican. We're all Hispanics and we're all stars. Could you... And we're all humans. And we're all humans. <laughs> Could you consider doing the Hispanic star song? <laughs> we already started it. <laughs> We're going to do it. Yes. Okay. I see a hand. Okay, we're going to have one last question, uh, one last question, and then all the way we're back going there. to allow, if you permit us, because I know that all of you have been very respectful. Everybody wants a photo with Reverend Jackson, with you guys. So we're going to have, after this, uh, after closing this panel, if you still stay for five minutes of photographs, uh, Reverend Jackson has accepted. And if you can accept, and then we can restart the program so that we're respectful. Okay, go on. All Thank you. There. Thank you for the opportunity. Hi. Hola. 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 Uh, my name is Beatriz Ayala. I'm from Puerto Rico. Uh, a bit of context before the question. I am entering the music business, the music industry. I just created a platform called Musicasa, which sole aim is to democratize the music ecosystem, giving a voice to the undiscovered artists. You're in the music business, 91% of artists are undiscovered. And that's a Very unfortunate. data point yeah. that hasn't changed since 2014, which means that streaming and video platforms to my belief, is making the famous more famous and the undiscovered to remain undiscovered. What are some of the recommendations you have as I enter <laughs> this industry and try to help this you know, new aspiring up and coming artists um, on how to like, you know, uh, not quit <laughs> while you, know, you get okay. frustrated. So and you one get Latina started. to another. The one Latina to another. It was <laughs> hard for me to be a woman in this industry. Right. You know, they kept saying to me, change your hair. Uh, no, this is, song is too feminine uh, for a man. And 80% of uh, the market that I have nowadays and since the beginning of my career are men. So I think the first thing is to challenge yourself and be truthful to yourself. Understand that if you have a talent, there's there's going to be ways for you to showcase it and try to inform yourself as much as you can. Stick to your values. That's what I always say. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of things out there. And make sure you go to bed with a clean consciousness. You know, For me, that's the most important thing because your time is going to come. And besides that, use every, every single platform you can by being authentic. Whatever is authentic transcends. That's what I think. Guys, a round of applause for Erica Ender and Desmond Child. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. The most downloaded ever song, The Father of Music, Living La Vida Loca. Give it to the American Desmond. <laughs>